Good morning, CCLD. Good morning, people of God. Hallelujah. Those of Hallelujah. you viewing online, we're so glad to have you here this morning with us as we enter into worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because we serve a God who is worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy Hallelujah. of our worship this morning. So we invite you just to lift your hands wherever you are. Don't be afraid to stand up. To join with us as we worship, to join with us as we sing, to join with us as we dance, as we honor our Savior this morning, because you're so worthy, God. You're so wonderful, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're Elohim, and God, and you deserve our worship. You deserve our worship. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's sing. Who am I that you are mindful of me? How you love me. When I call. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
the glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you glad that you're a friend of God? Are you glad that you can have a relationship with the Hallelujah. King of Kings Hallelujah. and the Lord of Lords? Hallelujah, God. It's an honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Hallelujah. He's so good, church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Who's here to give him the glory? I'm calling on the God of Jacob Who loves endure through generations I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses. The one who opened up the ocean. I need for you to do the same for me yeah. for me for me oh God my God I need you oh God my God I need you now how I need you now hey. On your faithfulness. Woo. On your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo. I'm calling on the God of Mary. Favor rest upon the lowly. I know with you all things are possible. Yeah. I'm calling on the God of David, who made a shepherd boy courageous. I may not face Goliath, but I've got my own giant. Oh, God, my God, I need you. Oh, God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, rock, oh, rock of Stand upon your faithfulness. On your faithfulness. Woo! He's so faithful. Hallelujah. Your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Give him the glory, church. Your faithfulness. You heard 
your children then. You'll hear your children now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You answer. You answer prayers by name. You answer prayers right now. You are the same God. You are the same God. Has He provided? You are providing. Hey, you are still providing. You are the same God. Hey! You are the same God. You move in power. You move in power. You are the same God. You are the same God. You are a healer. One more time, one more time. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, I need you. Now, do you need him now? How I need you now. Hey, oh rock, oh rock of ages. I'm standing on your face. Hold your faith for me. Yeah. Just the drums. Oh God. Oh God, my God, I need you now. I need you now. Oh rock of Oh rock, oh rock of ages. I'm standing. I'm standing. You've never let us down. You've never lost a battle. Hallelujah. He's so faithful. He'll never let you down. He was here was here. He started it all. Hallelujah. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have got up this morning. If it wasn't for God. He's so faithful. Everybody will turn their back on you, but, but he's faithful. Hallelujah. Just like he was there for David. He was there for Moses. He was there for Abraham. He's there for you. He 
is here for you right now. Give them your all, church. Give them your all. He's the same God yesterday and today and forevermore, forevermore. He's the same God. He's the same God. He's the same God that split the ocean. Hallelujah. He's the same provider. Hallelujah. He's the same healer. Oh, Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I need you. Church, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, I need you. Oh God, I oh God, oh God, oh God I do you need him, church? Come on, oh God, oh God, I need you. Oh God, oh God, I need you. Oh God, oh God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you. Give him the glory, hallelujah. I need Hallelujah, you Jesus. now. Oh. Hallelujah, God. How many know that we serve a good God? And this song is about how our God does not change. What he did for Daniel in the lion's den. What he did for Mary. What he did for David. Yeah. He's the same God that we serve today. The God who opened up the oceans. The God who raised Lazarus from the dead, he's still alive today and he's still doing miracles today. So whatever did you have need of today, just tap into that we serve the same God. The God that we read about, the God that we sing about, Hallelujah. the God that we pray Come to. On. He's a God that sits high and he looks low and he has all power in his hands. So all you got to do is open up your mouth and tell him, oh God, I need you. I need you to step in my situation, God. I need you to step in my situation. We need you today. Hallelujah. One more time. Oh God, I need you. Oh God, oh God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages. Rock of ages. I'm standing on your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. He's so faithful. you for your faithfulness, God. We thank you for your goodness, God. We thank you that it never runs out, God. We thank you that we don't have to worry if you're going to show up because you're already there, God. And you've always been there, oh God. You're so faithful, God. You're so faithful. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah, God. How many know that his goodness is running after us? The Bible says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. You're so worthy, God. You're so worthy this morning, Jesus. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. You're welcome in this sanctuary, God. The Bible says where two or three are gathered, that's where he is. That's Jesus. For the King of Kings is here. Jehovah Jireh, the provider, is here. Jehovah Shalom is here. Jehovah Nisi, he's here. Hallelujah. He's here, God, and we honor you today. Hallelujah. We honor you, God. We honor you today. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. 
Hallelujah. We thank you for dwelling in our midst. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. And all my days, I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful. Yes, God. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. Come on, say, I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. You have led me through the fire. In darkest nights. In darkest nights. You are close. You are close. I know other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of the goodness of God. Come on, lift your hands all over the room and tell them, say, say, oh my life, oh my life, you have been faithful. Come on, if that's your testimony, sing it to them. Oh my life, you have been so, so the goodness of God. Come on, one more time. Lift your hands and say, oh, my life. Oh, my life. You have been great. Yes, God. Oh, my life. Oh, my life. You have been so, so
Continue to worship him Hallelujah. this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Continue to honor him with the fruit of your lips this morning. Don't sit quiet. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's take a moment. Let's everybody lift our hands in this place. Let's close our eyes. Let's limit all distractions. Let's set the atmosphere for God to move. How many know you can, You have to set an atmosphere? You can't grow fruit trees on any in any state. It has to be a certain humidity. It has to be a certain weather. So in the same form, we have to create an atmosphere for God to move in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just let's just lift our voices unto the Lord. Let's just give them thanks. Let's give them glory. Let's praise them with our lips. Let's just take a moment. Let's do it right now. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Father. We lift your name upon high today, Lord. We know that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, we just thank you. A thousand th th tongues cannot thank you enough, my God. We thank you, Father God. You're a worthy God and you're a faithful God. Thank you, Lord, for loving us, Father God. Even in the times when we act crazy and look ugly, Father God, that you love us, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that nothing can separate the love that you have for us, Lord God. No demon in hell can separate the love that you have for us, Father. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for being our provider. Jehovah Jireh, you are our provider. We thank you, Lord, that you are the king of peace. We thank you, Lord, that you give us peace in the storm. You give us peace when we're going through hell. That, Father God, you give us peace in the storm. And we thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you're turning things around, Father. We thank you for divine reversals that are happening right now, Father God, in people's lives, Lord God. That, Father, by the time they get home, Father, they will receive good news, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for a divine reversal to take place, Father God. We know, Lord God, that you are working on the back end of the hill, Father. Even though we don't see it, Lord, but we know, Lord God, that you're moving on the back end, Lord. And, Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We know that faith does not come. We have to walk by faith and not by sight, Lord God. 
we just thank you father give us that 2020 vision lord god let us to see father in the spirit lord god that we will set our eyes upon you father you are the author and the finisher of our faith father thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit that you are here that you're moving up and down the aisles you're moving on your people's hearts today lord god there's somebody that needs a healing, Father God. And Holy Spirit, I just pray, I touch it and agree, Father, with for that healing, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You said two or more can touch and agree upon anything according to his will. And Father, it shall be done, Father. And I touch and agree, Father God, upon that healing that the person needs. I don't know if it's spiritual. I don't know if it's mental. I don't know if it's physical. But thank you, Father God, for healing, Father, your people, Lord. I thank you, Father, that you're restoring someone's joy, Father, today, Lord God. You said that the joy of the Lord is our strength. I thank you, Lord God, that you're restoring joy, Father, in this place, Lord God. I thank you, Father. We cast our cares upon you, Father. We know that you, Father, do not leave us nor forsake us, Lord God. And Father, we cast everything upon you, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord that you are concerned about just the very little things that we are concerned about, Father. Oh, I just thank you, Lord God. There's somebody that's been crying, and the Lord says that he knows your prayers, he sees your cries, and he, has, he is bottling up your tears in a bottle, that he sees everything. His arm is not too short to help us, and his ear is not too deaf to hear us. He says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you your heart's desire. And we thank you, Lord. We call it done, Father. Wrap that person in your arms. Cover them, Father, with your wings, Father. We just thank you today, Lord. We thank you today, Father. We give you all the praise, God. All the glory, Lord. Let's give the Lord a crazy hand praise. Hallelujah. We give you all the praise, God. All the glory, Lord. We thank you, Father. There's nothing that's too hard for you, God. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah in this place. We thank you, Holy Spirit. give you all the praise, all the glory, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a good, good God. He's a faithful God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the man of God. Use him for your glory, Lord God. I thank you for a fresh oil to be upon his head from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, God, that his tongue will be the tongue of a ready writer. And Father, the words will go out and it shall not return void and it'll accomplish what you desire it to. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. He's worthy. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Praise God for his goodness. Amen. Praise God for that awesome uh, worship team. All oh, hallelujah. Praise God for that beautiful exhortation. We just want to remember, guys, that he is good. God is good. Welcome to Corona Church of the Open Door. Are you guys excited this morning? You guys look good. All these smiles. You guys look good. I hope your Thanksgiving holiday was beautiful. Amen. Was it? Okay. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. We just want to welcome everybody to Corona Church of the Open Door. As Pastor Jenny often says, and I'm in full agreement, it's the fastest growing church in all the world. Amen. Amen. We just want to, at this time, welcome our, our family, our friends and family, but we also want to welcome, do we have any first-time visitors? Is there anybody today visiting us for the first time? Hey, man, you're beautiful. Welcome to our service. We pray that you receive a word from the Lord that will encourage your heart, and we welcome you to come back again, okay? Amen. Um, the ushers are going to hand you a, um, like a flyer. Just fill that out and put it in the offering when it comes around. Thank you for coming is my microphone off. Okay, church, we remember that we don't just meet once a week, right? We meet three times a week, okay? So we have our morning worship, this worship, every Sunday at 1015. Then we have Mountain Moving Monday, every Monday morning with Pastor Fred at 5.30 a.m. God is doing so much on the Mountain Moving Monday. Uh, mountains are being moved. 
strongholds are being broken and people's spirits are being encouraged in the Lord. Also, our third night that we meet as a ministry is um, Tuesday nights at 730 we uh, meet together for our Bible studies. It's through the scriptures Bible study with Pastor Fred. Right now he's teaching from the book of John and it is fire. It is fire. We are learning, we are growing, and we are being blessed. Um, we also want to just remind you our church vision is to make disciples out of all men for Christ's sake. So you need to be attending those services, right? So you can be discipled in the name of Jesus. Also, one more announcement. The men of God, how many men of God we have in here? Let me see your hands. Okay, men of God, keep your eyes open and your ears tuned. There is a men's fellowship, a men's gathering approaching quickly. More details to follow. Amen? Amen. We hope that you guys would enjoy the service this morning and that your heart would be blessed. In the name of Jesus, amen. Somebody give God the glory. No, 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 no. Somebody give God the glory. I don't know who y'all give the glory to because God's the one who woke us up this morning. If somebody tells me to give God the glory, the first thing I'm going to do is stand to my feet. I bet you if the president came in here, y'all stand to y'all feet. Greater than the president is here right now. Somebody give God the glory. Give God the honor. Hallelujah. Don't set on his praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now, that's how you give God the glory. Amen? Amen. Praise God. You may be seated in Jesus' name. We're going to take the offering up. The ushers are on the side. If you need envelopes, this is going to be real quick because we all know that we're supposed to give, right? And y'all don't need no cheerleader up here uh, telling y'all that God's been good to you, right? We just had Thanksgiving. Amen? Did anybody have an empty plate? Because if you do, we got some leftovers for you, don't we, honey? Where's my wife at? And we've been eating about three days, praise God. Amen? Hallelujah. But we still thankful. Amen? Hallelujah. Real quick, we're going to go to one verse. John, the 14th chapter, first verse. Now, listen, this, this verse is, is so important. It says, do not let your hearts, that's multiple. That's multiple. That's not just don't let your heart. Do not let your heart be troubled. What does that mean when your heart is troubled? You know, she said a whole lot of stuff. That's right. Because that means we worrying. Like we can fix anything. That's what Jesus, he, he comforts us. He said, let not your hearts. That's for everybody in here. Your hearts be troubled, no matter what you're going through. But why do we get to the place where our heart gets troubled? For lack of faith. The disciples were having a, a, a breakdown when Jesus told them, let not your heart be troubled. God knows that we're all human. We make mistakes. We worry. But he's letting us know, regardless of what you're going through, what you've been through, let not your heart be troubled. When it comes to your finances, the biggest worry in the world is what? Where am I getting some more money? I just ain't got enough money. I need more, 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 more money. Why? He wants that. She wants that. They want this. Money, 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 money. But God is telling us this morning, let not your heart be troubled. Don't worry about tomorrow. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Just be obedient to what he says. And he says to give. Amen. And it shall be given unto you. So if we worried about uh, not having, are you giving? If you're lacking somewhere, you got to ask yourself, you got to examine yourself and your lifestyle. Are you in alliance with the Bible? Are you doing, being obedient to God's word? And if you are, praise God. If not, it ain't too late. Amen? Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we thank you, Father. We ask you, Lord, to touch every heart right now, Lord Jesus. We thank you for a beautiful Thanksgiving, Father. We thank you that we was free. 
this Thanksgiving. We know there's people in prisons and in hospitals that can't leave. But you gave us grace and mercy, Lord, and gave us freedom to enjoy Thanksgiving with our family every day. And, Lord, we ask you to touch the hearts of everyone here, Lord. Touch their finances so they can give with a happy heart, with a cheerful heart. In the name of Jesus, we pray that the church say amen. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. confession, and then we're going to have pastor come up. One, two, three. We're believing for healthy marriages, healing from illness, financial freedom, and a debt-free life. We're believing for families to be restored and children to come back to the Lord. We're believing prison sentences will be reduced or overturn, and for favor with the court system. We're believing for the start of new businesses, buying new homes, and release of all tax limits. We're believing for $2 million cash for J2L. A seed will leave your hand, but will never leave your life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Everybody welcome the leader, our shepherd, Pastor Fred. Thank you, Pastor Mon. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you the glory. We honor you today. We thank you that you are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You reign. And there is none like you. You heal. You save. You deliver. You set free. You destroy yokes. You bring down mountains. And you give joy. And you give peace. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name. Is this, is this the strongest mic? Glory to your name. Is it? Glory to your name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Is that better? Yeah, yeah. I hear my hear. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Father. How was your Thanksgiving? Gobble, gobble. Yeah, um, before we get into the teaching, do some house cleaning. Um, 
I'm making an announcement for the men uh, we're working on for the men to come together. We're going to be at a uh, top golf. How many of you guys have played golf? Yeah, I mean, you know, the little game, the, the little kitty games. But we want, we want to have, uh, I believe that's a great time for the men to connect and uh, uh, with each other. And so um, we will be letting you know it will be before uh, New Year's. So we just want to just go into 2024 with the men coming together on one accord. The Bible says in Proverbs 27, 17, that's iron sharp and iron. So does a man sharp in the continents of his friend. Uh, so the men, we need to come together because we a lot of things we have a lot of things in common. The things that women go through are different than the things that uh, men go through. Uh, Pastor Karen, God bless my wife, my beautiful wife. Before the church ever got started, we had a uh, women's conference right now. <laughs> right, Nikki. Right, Adela. Right, Cynthia. These are my day ones, you know. And, and then uh, I'm going to let uh, um, Jake sit in for his mother-in-law. Oh, Tip, I see you, Tip. Uh, for, for Carla, she was day one. They've been day ones. Day one. Over 20 years. Women, women, they, they have already to the moon. We're trying to get in the boat. They're gone. So, but suffice to say that... Um, when we do, I want to put a list out, and I want the men to sign up. Let us know that you're available so we can feed you. You need a head count. Uh, it'll be on a Saturday morning, like 9 to 10, or no more than after 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock is over, right? Is that around the time? Start at 10. So it's just a time for us to fellowship. I'm sorry, Chloe, you can't come this one, baby. <laughs> well, that's Ethan and uh, Adolfo, but that, that's all right. They got a women's conference. You can, you, when you get older, you can be able to go with that. That being said, um, I'm going to pray. And we, well, first of all, let's lift up your Bible and repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I'm a believer and not a doubter. I'm a doer and not just a hearer. My life is made better from hearing the word of God. But faith come by hearing, Brandon. And that can be found where? All right. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Did, how many of you guys know that the Bible was written for saved people? You know that? Well, I thought it was written for everybody. Yes, it is written for everybody. But there are instructions that really address believers on how to walk this life successfully as best as you can do. But if you don't know the instructions, how are you going to walk in this life the way God has intended for you to walk? Now, my assignment as a pastor is to teach you. I'm, I'm not going to preach to you every Sunday. There will be times I will preach. But preaching is for the lost. Is there anyone here that has not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Anybody? I mean, don't be ashamed. Okay. So we're, we're all saved. So I don't have to preach to you. You're, you're saved. I need to teach you how to stay saved and how to walk victorious in this life in spite of what's going on in your life. Teaching. Now, did you know that more people 
are going to hell than they are going to heaven. Ooh, ooh. Hey, hey, Pastor. I didn't, I didn't come here. That's, that's negativity. I don't like that energy. Really? You won't like those flames either if I don't teach you. Because Proverbs 16, 25 said, there's a way to seem right with me. In other words, a lot of people today, oh, that, well, that's not your, that's not my truth. This, I Uber. I picked up a young lady Tuesday. Took her from Lake Elsinore to La Palma. And we had a long time to talk. End of the story is that she has a good heart. She got divisions. She got plans. He said, but I just, when it came down to, I just believe as my ancestors. I'm part Hispanic and I'm part Native Indian. And I believe in reincarnation. It's not my job to shoot her down. My job is to lovingly explain to her that maybe your ancestors didn't know about it, hear the word of Jesus Christ. So they will be judged on their merits alone. For example, let me give you an example. If you were in the in the in the in the in, the, uh, in Australia, they call the indigenous. They're black people with blue eyes and straight hair, black like me. I'm an indigenous brother. A hundred years ago, they may not have heard Jesus. So, what? what how would they be judged if God's a just judge? And He says, and Jesus says in John fourteen six, "I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the he- get to heaven but by me." Well, how can they get to heaven? They haven't heard Jesus. You have to take everything in context. You don't know. Listen, what you don't know, you don't know. You don't know. Did I say that? <laughs> what you don't know, you don't know. You don't know. But what you do know, that's what you be held accountable for. Now, I had her in the car. Talking about Jesus Christ, and I told you, you listen. Before you die, find out. Don't forget about social media. Forget about Facebook and all this doctor woo woo. And they tell you they they. This, uh, like I said, <laughs> the the, the Bible is a white man's religion, and no blue eyes. And you know, well, some of that the, God didn't put the blue eyes in that. Yeah, did two white men did put that in, but it didn't change the fact. That the, the gospel is still true. No matter, for, for example, I, 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 how can I say this? I'm, I, 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 I don't want to lose anybody. I want to stay. I want to keep this as simple as I possibly can. You know, um, there have been bad marriages. I've had bad marriages. I've seen my father and mother have bad marriages. So can I just uh, throw it out, the baby out with the bathwater? All marriages are bad. No. No. It's an individual case. And because my father misrepresented what marriage should look like, my ex-wife, who were married to me for four years, was sleeping the last two years with my best friend that didn't. And, and listen. God died for her. And as long as she repent, you'll make it in. And she did repent. See, stop living in the past. Everything that happened to you, Romans 8, 28 said, we know it all things will work together for your good. It's up to you. How are you going to look at it? So here's the person. Here's the thing. So I said to her, listen, you got to be born again. You have to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. God bless you. I love you. Thank you for talking to me. One will plant a seed. Another will water. But God will give it in. Each and every person, ours, if you're a Christian, we all, this is for believers. There are family members that 
that you know and you have friends that you know have not set foot in a church in 10 years, 5 years, 3 years. And they're going on their life. But one day, one day, that day will come. I can promise you. I can guarantee you. Death per person. None of you will explain. Well, I don't want to deal with it now. You deal with it later. Just like that computer, your, your, your laptop. Please put in a North Star virus. Stop your computer from crashing. Then it gives you an option, now or later. It gives you, and that's how God is. You want to deal with me now or you deal with me later? And most people, Matthew 7, 14, 7, 13, and 14. Matthew 7, 13, 14. And most people, because the statistics show, most people say, later. Pay your light bill later. You'll be lighting a candle. Pay your car too much later. Repo man come down your block. You get the picture. Those things are insignificant. If you compare this to your soul, that is eternal. So my assignment on what are you practicing is to get you ready. Now, two things the Bible teaches. Hell or salvation. But see, Satan comes to kill, steal, page, and destroy. Kathy, there are people who will be in heaven with no gifts. They are barely making it in the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3. They'll barely make it in with nothing to show for it. Well, I don't care, I'll be in heaven. Listen to me. Hmm. That's when the Bible says, in heaven there'll be no tears, because he's gonna wipe away all the tears. When they see what they could have gotten. <laughs> You won't even remember. Case in point. Each and one of you are comfortable in your home right now. You're comfortable. You go to work Monday, through, Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You can't wait to get home. Get in your bed, take your shower. Then I take you on a tour the Pacific Palisades, looking over the ocean, watching the sun set in the ocean, and you're there for three months. Then I take you back to your house. But if you never went there, you never know. I want love, whatever, you, if you're giving out something, I want the best. I don't want to minimize it. I want to maximize it. I um, say this, um, like I said, I sent out a weekly devotion. And if, you, if I hadn't sent you out a weekly devotion, um, which you can scriptures and a, a, a thought of the week that you meditate on, and, uh, please call the office and leave your number. And then I will send it to you. I send the individual. I don't do group text. But my point I'm making is that I do it. And I've been sick. Today, this Sunday is my best day. I really felt in two months. Um, thank you. Um, 
So I, Angela, she, I, I, God gives me a thought of the week, he give me scriptures, and, and I send it to Angela. Angela, you know, proofread it, make sure everything, punctuation, everything is right. But this week is every week this doesn't fail. That whenever I send, it, it has not failed. Why did you? How did you? No. And this one guy, Adapo, um, I, I picked him up uh, over about six months ago. And um, he said, we talked, nice guy. Seemed like everything was going well with him in his life. I mean, he asked me what did I do when I'm not Uber. I told him I, James, I told him I, I, I'm a pastor. When I said that, it's just like playing tennis. If you hit the ball over the net and that ball doesn't come back, then let's let you know they're not interested. But that's okay, but he was not a really nice guy. He gave me some tip, tips on on how to, when I'm ready to start my, my podcast, because that's what he does. He has over 10,000 people following. Nice guy. But when I sent the text, I mean, the thought of the week was anxiety. Anxiety. And what that word really meant. He said, how did you know? I've been married for 15 years. I never go to church. I never went to church. I, I'm 40, 41 years old. I, I don't believe. But for the last two weeks, I've been going to church. My wife, we've been married for 15 years. She says she doesn't love me anymore. And she wanted to do it. I have a 10-year-old daughter and a 7-year-old daughter. And she left me there. My point is this. Sooner or later, what do you... <laughs> See, Satan's job is to tell you not now. Later. Now is the time. Because tomorrow is not given to me. James says, your life is like a vapor. You know what a vapor is? <laughs> you ever boil some grits? I mean, boil grits? You know I don't know how to cook. You boil water, boil it, and then a bubble goes, poof, just like that. It's gone. January the 7th, those people that are concert on a Saturday, be having fun. They didn't know that within hours, Death and destruction is coming there. Easter. Two years ago. Easter Sunday. A mother was here with her children. The word was being pre preached. She came up for prayer. The next day, she had a stroke. But because of the word that was sown in her, she was able to recover. She's back walking. You would never know she had a stroke. But what are you saying? I want to teach you the word today. Oh, Lord, what? We don't even know that. What time? Oh, okay, okay. All right, so that was my introduction. Did you know more? Did we, did we put that up? Matthew 7? No. Okay, fine. Are, are we working today? Okay, all right. I'm sorry. DeAndre know me. Let's give DeAndre a hand. That man there. 
uh, 13 and 14, I believe, yes, sir, yes, sir. Um, I normally don't do this, but I'm going to do this. I have to. Next to the sun, rising and setting on a continuous basis. DeAndre and Alex, faithful. Come on. I mean, faithful. I mean, I have like this. Faithful. Your rewards is in heaven. I said, do you not know more people, more people will be going to hell than heaven. I know you don't like, most people don't like to hear that. Church people especially don't like to hear that. Um, Monty. Get into the, the narrow gate. Because you, you know when you have, when, when, when we, we talk, what are you practicing? If you're practicing the wrong thing, you're in the broad gate. But when you do things right, it's not, it's tight. Right. It was easy. You know, making a million dollars, if it was easy, everybody would be a millionaire. You got to make some sacrifices. And then at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there will be in that broad gate. A church of 500 members, a church of 5,000 uh, members. When it comes to prayer, if the church calls for prayer, 300 uh, or 500 members, maybe 50 will show up. Of 1,000, maybe 100. What are your points? When it comes to the things of God that straighten out, you only have a remnant. God knows that. Moses sent in 12 spies. Only two came back with a positive. Only two came back to validate what God has said. Only two. So don't get caught up in the majority. Verse 14. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which lead to life. Narrow is the way that leads to life. But few. Turn to your neighbor and say few. I turn to your neighbor and say, are you in that few? Now, Galatians 5, 16. Now, I want Jenny. Jenny will be, Pastor Jenny will be reading from the the, the um, message Bible, and I had her to read this in the, from the message Bible, then I'm going to read it in the King James Version. Galatians 5. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Keep going. For the lust of the flesh are against the spirit, uh, uh, lust against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one another, and do not and, and so that they, so that you, yay means you, cannot do the things that you should do. When you're in the flesh, when you're practicing the flesh, we, and, and so what is the flesh? What is the, so, you, this, like I said, the, this is written for, for church people. So, so what, the, what God is saying, there are people in the church that's in the flesh. So let's, leave, let's just look. Take a look, see what's in the church. Keep going. But if you're led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Law means that you, you're trying to get it in. Your works are going to make it in. Your good works. You, I don't care if you served in the church faithful like DeAndre and Alex and, and, and Brian and and, and Pastor Monte and, and Adapo and the other men, Chuck. and I don't care if you, John, uh, Robert, I don't care if you're faithful, but if you're, see, if your heart is not right, 
If your heart is not, what is your motive? Why are you here today? Why are you here today? You here to pick up on a guy? A girl? Why are you here? We giving out some money? Let me get in line. So you obviously, you must be here for the right reason. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. So, now the works of the flesh, oh my God, manifest mean made large. <laughs> we're going to marry. We're going to see what's in the church that's made large right now. I, I, and I'm going to just tell you now. I'm in one of those. At least one of them. So I'm telling on myself, y'all better tell on yourself too. Which are these? Adulteries in the church? There are pastors that are committing adultery. Fornication. Now, I just if just finish on this. I, I will be unpacking all of this. But the Holy Spirit Angela shows me that in the church. We talk about homosexuality and adultery. But do you know you got more fornicators in the in the church than the, the, the law allows? So let's not practice these things. Now you all do it. I've done it. So if you, let me tell you, if you got it all together, get out of here. This is not the place for you. You got it all together? Run. You don't fit in this house. This house is for, for people who understand, Lord, I need help. I admit what I'm doing is not pleasing in your sight. But help me. But if you don't ask for help, how do you? How, listen. Uncleanness, lasciviousness. Keep going. Uh, yeah, please. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. Now, you know, the wrath and the strife and sedition, this year, heresies, that's what you see mostly on YouTube, Facebook, these so called Doctors of, of, of theology. They are starting to teach another Jesus and have large people follow. But that's nothing new. Envy, murder. We don't call it drunkenness. You don't hear that word anymore. I, no, you don't hear it anymore. They put a new, a, 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 a cute name to it. Substance abuse. You're drunk. And if you're practicing this, you're going to go to hell. I know it sounds harsh, but it's true. Such a lack of the which I tell you before. What did he tell you before? He says the exact same thing in Romans chapter 1. The same thing. Jenny. So look, now look what it says. Of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things to not inherit the kingdom of God. Those that practice those things, not do, because we all have done it. But practice means like you've been married for 30 years, you've been having adultery on the side for 30 years. 
You didn't just slip into that. You practice this. I love the things that Oprah Winfrey has done. Yet Paul said, Paul called out some names. Were well, you supposed to call? No. Read your Bible. Paul said, Mark certain people that are against the gospel. You've done great things. Build schools in Africa, give out cars and homes and all that kinds of stuff. Your works, you can't work your way into heaven. That means that Jesus died for nothing. This thing is, this, this is serious. It's not about works alone. But her and Stephanie have been dating for 23 years. Nobody's saying nothing. We have, the church, the world has creeped into the church. Wedlock. Babies are born in wedlock. I know that happens. I know that. I have to teach the word. I'm sorry. In love. But after the third child, and then everybody's coming, oh, I'm so happy for you. Then the invitation out through the church. Nobody's saying nothing. Not that you should. You should pray. But you should you should be at a place where your spirit should be grieved for that person's soul. Jenny, could you read in the in the and not the, not the message Bible? It, it speaks a message where you can ask and understand. Now she's reading verse sixteen. Yeah, the message Bible. And you see that that sticker that says message. Let me practice. Yeah, turn it. I got it ready for you. Verse sixteen, and you're gonna read from verse sixteen to uh, verse twenty-three. Galatians. 5, 16 to verse 23. Now, uh, when you, because the Message Bible, it gives two, maybe two or three scriptures, and then it explains the whole, uh, the theme of it. So it's a little, little different. So, Jenny, whenever you, if you read two scriptures, let us know, and then DeAndre can follow you, and they can kind of see what, 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 uh, what the mess the word is saying. Is that clear to everybody? Okay. Uh, go ahead. Okay, verse 16. Uh, my counsel it my counsel is this live freely, animated and motivated by God's spirit. Then you will won't feed the compulsions of selfishness. For there is a root of sinful self interest in us that is at odds with a free spirit. Wow. What say that again? Please. Do you know what's inside of you? Say, say that again. There is a root of sinful self-interest in us that is at odds with a free spirit. Selfishness. It's a, it's a root. It means that it's deep in, in, it's, it's, it's in your soul of your spirit. Go ahead, Jim. Just as the free spirit is incompatible with selfishness these two ways of life are and i don't know this. that's okay it's all right. let's no, go let's it's, keep going. and keep going. i don't know so that you cannot live at times one way and at times another way according to how you feel on any given day <laughs> oh my god dream dream oh. Twelve o'clock at night. Hello. I'm sleeping. Can I come over? Oh man, I get up and go to work in the morning. I'm gonna be there. All right.
I'm making light of it, but that's reality. It could be something else. I want you to listen. Pick up somebody. I was in Walmart. And it was late. It was raining last week. I didn't feel good. The long line. So I went to self checkout. Do you want a bag? Zero. One. I mean, one. Zoop. It didn't take. Okay, you do it one more time. I'm walking off with you. I know y'all don't know. See, I know the thoughts don't come in y'all mind because y'all too holy. I, and I and I'm and I'm thinking about this teaching. I'm thinking about Nikki. I'm being real now. I'm thinking about this teaching. I want to go home. I, and I'm looking around for the lady. She's a better come on. Or I'm going to steal this thing. So the thing that you should do. Don't do it. But it comes, it comes at a time when it, you can justify your action. And when the next day comes, you have a loved one that just lost their job, or someone's in a car accident, and you go, they say, pray for such and so and so. And then there comes Satan, the accused. Don't you dare. God's not going to hear your prayer, you little thief. No, I'm telling you how he works. I'm telling you how he works. He's so subtle. He's a snake. And he only comes but to kill, steal, and destroy Keep going, Jimmy. It said, okay, so you can, okay. Oh, I did pay for it. Oh, yeah, I did pay for it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Why don't you choose to be led by the Spirit and so escape the erotic compulsions of a law-dominating existence? I escaped it that time. I escaped it that time. How about you? Turn to your neighbors. Are you going to escape the next time? We got a lot of liars in this church. <laughs> okay, come on. Go on keep going. <laughs> okay, this is going to be verse 19 to 21. That's okay, how it okay, breaks okay, it. Okay, yeah, 19 to 21. Okay, so then it says, It is obvious what kind of life develops out of trying to get out of your own way all of the time. Repeti repetitive, love loveless, cheap sex, a stinky... Cheap sex at 12 midnight? <laughs> you call that cheap? I, no, that's what God said. <laughs> Cheap sex. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Keep going. A stinking accumulation of mental and emotional garbage. Frenzied and joyless grabs for happiness. Trinket gods. Magic show religion. Paranoid loneliness. Cutthroat competition. All consuming yet never satisfied wants, a brutal temper, a imp impotence to love or to be loved, divided homes and divided lives, small minded and lopsided pursuits, the vicious habit of desperate personalizing everyone in a rival, uncontrolled and uncontrollable addictions, and ugly parodies of community. I could go on. Wow. That's just something too. That was when you're walking DeAndre in the in the flesh. But yet still when you go to the church, most church 
you coming out, everything's going to be on top. No, everything is not. Everything is conditional. Everything is conditional. The word contrary means is as a husband and a wife go to counseling meetings and um, everything that the counselor says to the husband and the wife, they do contrary to what he or she said to him. So that's just like when God is giving you counsel through the word of God, through me or whatever pastor, and you go contrary to the counseling that we have instructions, teaching that we have given you. Give you another example. I wrote this down. Come here, Alex. Just, just look at the name I put there. <laughs> All right. So it's just like a lawyer representing your case. And you do everything contrary to what the lawyer has told you to do. Somebody say Donald Trump. That's why, and I'm not talking politics, but what I'm saying is that that's why he goes through one lawyer after lawyer. Now, he, he can't get the best lawyers now. He gets lawyers that will... <laughs> will allow him to do and say contrary what he should do. Come to your name and say, don't be like Donald Trump. In the spirit. My job as a pastor, I have to warn you guys, otherwise the blood will be on my hands. I say the blood will be on my hands. Turn to um, Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel 33, 1. I remember when, are you any Cowboys fans in here? No? Okay. Oh, okay. Got one? Okay, thank you. Got one? Where is it? Well, put your hand up. Hey, go, adopt. Oh, no, no, Rosella, okay, we got two. Okay, can I get three? Can I get three? Three, 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 going once, going twice? I won't say Denver because that, they're, they're, they're erupt in this place. <laughs> Look at Pastor Audrey running on the back. <laughs> Ezekiel, um, Jenny, you and I both were, we're, we're, we're tag team on this. I'll let you know. Again, the word of the Lord came to me, called Ezekiel. Now, the reason I said Ezekiel Cowboys because when he signed with the Dallas Cowboys, Ezekiel Elliott, man, he, he came like a burst of fresh air. Then we got that bag. You don't see him no more. But anyway, saying, son of man, speak to the children of your people. Say to them, when I bring a sword upon the land, and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make them their watchmen. See, sometimes we, we think God won't bring destruction to his people. Sometimes he does to get their attention. You see it over and over again. When they murmur and complain, what do you do? 
He sent snakes to bite him. <laughs> Murmur and complaining doesn't get you anywhere. So Ezekiel, I'm a watchman. Look at verse um, Look at verse 3. When the watchman, when I say, see, I have to show you, tell you guys what you're doing in the word of God is wrong. Because if I don't share that with you and you die in your sins, then God is going to hold me accountable. Look at what it says right there, verse 3. And when you see the sword coming upon the land, and if he blows the trumpet, I'm supposed to blow a trumpet. That's a military term. My, I, I should be blowing the trumpet. And I think I'm, I'm trying to blow it today. And warn the people, verse 4, when whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, if that sword comes and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. If I warn you, you guys keep, I'll tell you guys, but I'm not talking specific, I'm just talking specific, or generally. You continue fornicating, you continue lying, you continue outbursts, you continue, what, uh, what all those things that in Galatians 5, 17 means walking in the flesh, you practicing it. Then, I'm not held responsible. The word trumpet it's used in the military term. And a trumpet is, is used to wake up. How many people are in the military? Okay, so do they use the trumpet sometimes? Okay, to wake up, five things. To go to sleep, they tell you when to go to sleep, when you wake up. You're in the military now. Hostility means war. They tell you when to go to war. Cease from fire. That's what Hamas want Israel to do in, the, in, the, in Gaza, Gaza. To cease from fire so they can regroup. It's a military time. And retreat. So when they blow the trumpet, That trumpet is speaking to only those who are in that military. My voice is a trumpet. Do you know there's a TV program? Somebody started singing right now. Somebody started singing. They sound, come on, sing quick. Sing like you're at home in the shower. But don't say that. Don't sing loud, though. Sing. Quick. Girl, you sang that happy birthday. I never heard that birthday song. That's a TV show called The Voice. It's popular. And it's sending out messages. So biblical messages to you. Well, my voice as a pastor is to send a message to soldiers that has that's, that's going through. Look at first, Second Timothy. Second Timothy, I, I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. Second Timothy uh, 2 3. Second Timothy 2 3. 2 3. You are a soldier. And there's a voice that you need to hear to warn you of danger. Now, therefore, endure hardness. If you're going through hardness during this season, listen to the voice. It's time to fight. It's time to wake up. Therefore, endure hardness as a what? 
as you go through this series, God is speaking to somebody, right? Now. I'm sure it's spoken quite a few. I need to take this thing serious. Yes, you do. Because, see, your life is not your own. Any given moment, the next breath that you take may not come again. What will people say about you? What will people say about you? As it pertains to Christ. What will they say about you? When you're, when you're uh, in that castle, I have to go graphic because I need to get your attention. I have to warn you. What will people say about you? Spiritual. I saw uh, Brittany on Facebook. Something ridiculous, Pastor Mark. I mean, just ridiculous. The man was not in a casket. Some of you may have seen it. He had sweats on. They had a, 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 a dumbbell and had his hands up on the waist because that's, that's what he loved to do. And people were taking pictures at the funeral. What? Everything now is a show. Everybody's a star now. Because of Facebook, Instagram. And the truth be told, Pastor Brittany, as soon as they take that picture, it's just a show. It's just a show. And God is saying, you don't have to pretend. If you walk in the spirit. Oh, Pastor Jenny, I'm sorry. Verse 23. Read that if you walk in the spirit. Please. If you walk, listen to what it says when you walk into the spirit. And then we're going to conclude. Verse 23. Yeah, uh uh-huh. You, you didn't read, you read, uh, yeah, right, right. So this is this part. Watch. Now, this is when you walk in the spirit, guys. This is the good news. I'm going to leave you with good news. I'm going to leave you with <laughs> no, I had a few. No. <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 22. But what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives much the same way the fruit appears on an orchard. On an orchard. Things like affection for others, for affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion Stop in right the there. heart. Stop right there. New Year's Eve is coming, and everybody make a New Year's resolution. I'm gonna lose fifty pounds by the first week. And don't stick to it. But when you are walking in the spirit, keep going. A sense of compassion in the heart and a conviction that a basic holiness permits things and people. We find ourselves involved in a loyal commitment, not needing to force our way in life, able to marshal and direct our energies wisely. Oh my God. That's what God wants for us. That's what God wants for us. You are telling me. Alejandro, that's what God wants for you. Jane, that's what God wants for you. So tell that's what God wants for you. Cynthia, Robert, Joy, Sherry, Matt Luke, Alexandra, Tiff, Rosalind, Joyce, Adapo, Chloe, Ethan, my brother, you haven't been here long enough, but I'm going to know your name. 
so much conditions. So God wants to had a place at the start. Your son for redemption. We go way back. Christ for twenty years. But I don't have that kind of content. He wants, he wants, he wants your joy. He wants that, that peace, that stability. stability. And whatever you start, you finish. Right? Nikki, Kat, Kathy, Paige, Abdullah, Patentina, Rosella, Lisa Dion Jackson, Melody, Anaya, Pastor Jimmy, Brian, my main man. What no, does that say? I got the beat on I should know it, right? Pastor Monty. Pastor of Minister of Music Britain. Joe. I haven't I've got I haven't got you in my spirit, but I'm gonna put it in. Lamar. Oh. I'm gonna think about it. I, I remember people by name, places, things. Think of the Lakers. Sir. Lamar. But I don't want to, I don't, I don't, I don't want to associate with him. I don't have to change another Lamar. Get another, I got to get another. I don't want that. I don't want that, that vision in my head. Okay. Angela. Father, we thank you. We bless you now. The people named that are called. Pastor Audrey. They didn't call them. You said the hairs on their head are not good. You know they're rising up and you know they're going down. You said faith come by hearing and hearing by the word. But Lord, I just pray as we go I've into carried a Christmas and New God, that you will, you will give them that joy long peace of walking in the Spirit, oh God. Lord, you said I you give them the desires of God. Give them delight in your word. I pray for you. That this time that they have spent, oh God, they will never have your this time to spend again. Because their our life is like an hourglass, Jenny. Sands from the time we are born is churned, and the sign times are, are moving. And this seems as though they're moving faster than ever before. Lord, let us redeem the times that we're living in. Lord, when we have taken our last breath, they will say something good about us that we spoke to them in the things of God. Oh God. That they help us. They, they encourage us. They gave to us, oh God. They spent time with us, oh God. Lord, we thank you and we give you the glory. We thank you, Father, that you are lifting those weights and those burdens that we are carrying during this holiday season. So many burdens that we are carrying today. But I decree and I declare now every person that has come under, under the sound of my voice with every burden that you have walked in here with today, I decree and I declare you will leave it here at the altar. You will not take it back home with you. Because faith has come into your mind, into your life, because you have heard the word of God. You read the word of God. And God cannot lie. As we go into this holiday season, the devil wants to steal your joy. But he cannot have it. Because the Bible says in Job 22, 28, I can decree and declare a thing, Joy Bennett, and it shall be established. I decree and I declare now, burdens are being lifted now. 
Yokes are being destroyed. Fear leave now. Depression go now. Lack of self-confidence die now in the name of Jesus. A can-do spirit has come upon you now. Philippians 4.19 said, you can do, uh, uh, he will supply all of your needs. Philippians 4.13 uh, 4, 4 said that you can do all things through Christ who strengthen you. Strengthen them today, God. And with that prayer, if you want to a touch and a, of agreement as we go into this holiday season, you keep asking, you keep seeking, and you keep knocking as you come up to the prayer room. If you need prayer, come up right now. Please, come up. Just come up.